my name is James McCool. I am the owner of PaydirtDFS.com, and welcome to another episode of Community Conversations. Uh, this is a playlist of videos that I have put together for the YouTube channel based on conversations that we have in the community Discord over at Paydirt. Um, a lot of these conversations are kind of anchored in game theory and decision making and just how to make better decisions in DFS and in sports betting as well. Um, some of them do come with a little bit more of a psychological aspect. Some of them are a little bit more math based. Uh, this one is going to be kind of both, I think. Uh, today we're going to be talking about building a bankroll uh, and kind of the journey of what building a bankroll is, right? So um, this conversation comes up from a uh, subscriber today who had asked if playing with low stakes playing low stakes contests, say $1,000 a month in DFS, was worthwhile. Uh, and it kind of brought me to putting together a couple different charts and a little bit of examples to go over what building a bankroll actually looks like. So before we get started, make sure you go over and check out the site, paydirtdfs.com. I have unique metrics and models for nearly every single sport that you can play for DFS and for sports betting alike. Uh, there's a lot of free stuff over there as well. There's free research sheets for MLB and NFL right now, and all the posts on the site are free as well. So uh, if you like what you hear here, uh, make sure that you go check out the site, as well as joining the Discord. Uh, you can find a link to that in the member tools over on the site as well, and I'll put a link in the description. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So what is building a bankroll, right? Um, Building a bankroll means that you are trying to put together a bankroll that enables you to play higher stakes contests that can make it so that you can uh, develop either a supplemental income or a main income from DFS. Uh, a lot of people, when they think of building a bankroll, they will put together this thought in their head of like, oh, well, you know, I, I want to play low stakes and, and keep grinding up and keep grinding up and then one day I can enter those big contests that I've always wanted to play. It's like, sure, that's that's a pretty good explanation of what building a bankroll mindset should be, right? A lot of people though don't actually dedicate to what it takes to building a bankroll and then they fall apart while they are building it and in the middle of it and then they never actually reach that goal, right? So the, con the, the reason why you wanna build a bankroll is so that you can play contests that are going to be lucrative enough to be able to actually give you a supplemental income. So is building a bankroll for everyone? I, I think that that should be a question that's answered first. And the answer is no. Like you don't really have to build a bankroll. Um, if you just want to make a hundred to $200 a month playing DFS or sports betting, that's totally fine. Like you just want it so that you can go out to dinner with your wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, if you want, you know, a little bit of extra money for beer money, if you want to go to the movies, if you want to go to Top Golf, whatever. Uh, you don't have to build a bankroll. Like you can just play with thousand dollars a month. You can make your hundred to two hundred dollars a month, and withdraw that, and then just even out your account. You can do that over and over and over again if you'd like. Uh, granted, you are going to have ups and downs. We'll show that here in a second. But um, you don't have to build a bankroll. Uh, the purpose of building a bankroll is so that you can then make enough money to where it is substantial or, or at least meaningful um, secondary income or main income. So why would you want to build a bankroll? Uh, you would want to be able to make somewhere between $1,000 and $2,000 per month. That's at least for me what I consider a decent goal if you're trying to make supplemental income from DFS. <clears throat> so how exactly do you build a bankroll? Uh, there are a lot of ways to cut it, but I'm going to show a very blunt example of what you can expect when you actually go through a bankroll building process, right? Um, when you're building out your bankroll, what you should expect is you should be, expect to hardly ever withdraw from your DFS account. That's not gonna be the purpose of it. And you should expect to not have to deposit very often either. So uh, you likely are not going to be um, dealing with your own money here. You'll want to deposit once at the beginning of it and then play off of that and utilize that as a baseline for your bankroll for the next month and the coming months and blah, 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 blah. So as an example of that, I built up this little sheet here where you can see that we have a bankroll building exercise here that shows a kind of a one year example of building a bankroll. Starting with $1,000 as your bankroll and then going through each month showing the profit and showing the amount in play per slate. 
Now, granted, this is a baseball specific example. I suppose you could also use it for NBA, but the point here is that this is a daily contest example. So I'm gonna walk through what each one of these columns means, and then we're gonna kind of go over some of the ins and outs of what you would expect for your bankroll, and you know the the long term effects of it, the externalities, stuff like that. So the month column, very obviously, is just the month that you're playing. You know, I couldn't label these January through December, but who has the time for that? Uh, the bankroll is going to be a rolling bankroll, so you'll see that this first one is 1,000, and then the second one is actually going to be this formula up here, which is uh, cell B2 plus cell D2. So this is basically your next month's profit, or your next month's starting bankroll. Uh, your ROI is going to be a toggle that we use for this video, where I'm gonna be showing you guys what happens based on the amount of money that you make based on the money that you played. Profit is going to be based on the ROI that we are inputting, and then the in play is going to be 3% of your monthly bankroll in play. Uh, the reason why I say 3% is because I typically, when I am coaching um, with clients, I typically tell them to play somewhere between one to 3% of their bankroll per slate uh, in daily sports. And remember that pertains to their monthly bankroll. When we talk about seasonal bankrolls, that's a different thing, but that's, that's not a conversation for this video. Uh, just know that we are talking about a monthly bankroll here. So what do we have here? Uh, this is basically a visual of somebody who has an eight to 10% ROI each month at the end of a full year, right? And, and it's cumulative. So what we're gonna be building up here, we're gonna start with $1,000 and then for the first month we have a 10% ROI, $100 profit. We have $30 in play per slate for the first month. Into the next month, we now have a bankroll of 1100 because we took this $100 profit, we added it onto our initial bankroll, now our 1100 So if we were still playing, you know, $33 in play here, and then we ended up having a negative 10% ROI, we lost $110 this month. The next month, we have a $990 bankroll. So et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, we're building through. At the end of this, if you have somewhere between an eight to a 10% cumulative ROI across all 12 months, then you're gonna end up with a bankroll of $2,700, give or take, right? Like it could be a little bit more, it could be a little bit less, but this is a fairly realistic expectation, I think, of somebody who is building out of the bankroll, starting with relatively low stakes contests and going through each month, adding that onto their bankroll, subtracting from their bankroll and continuing to build through and grind and grind and grind. So this, if, uh, if a regular person who was not fully dedicated to playing and building their bankroll, if they hit this negative 10% and they lost this $110 and they see that they are now at $990, they'd be like, man, this is gonna be such a long grind. This is gonna suck, blah, blah, blah. And then the next month, you know, you only make $49. So now your profit's only at 1,039. And it's like after three months now, you have only made $39, right, overall. So that's, that's not great, right? Like 39, 39 bucks over three months, that doesn't feel great. And then all of a sudden, month four, you have a really good hit, right? Like you take down the, the $4.20 max or you take down the mini max or something like that with, uh, with a relatively small portfolio. You get a 50% boost, you have $519 in profit and now things look better, right? You're up to $1,500 in your bankroll, you're playing $46 per day in in contests, right? That's your action. And then you're down 15, up 20. This is how it goes, right? You're gonna have ups and downs. You're gonna have months where you're really, really good, right? And then you're gonna be treading water for a couple months, plus five, plus six, negative five. You might hit again in month 10. And at the end of it, you can expect this, right? And then for the next year for DFS, your starting bankroll is now $2,700, significantly better, almost three times what you had at the beginning of last year. And now you're playing to where a 10% return on this, if we plug that in, is $277 for that month. And that's pretty good. So this is what I would expect a normal bankroll building process to look like, somewhere between seven and 10% return. There are, of course, externalities, right? where say that you're going through this, right? And then in month two, you end up doubling your bankroll, right? Like you take down two GPPs or something like that and, and you double up your bankroll right away, right? You end up making $1,100 in the second month. Now your bankroll is $2,200. And then if we go through the rest of this, same, like th this is just changing one month 
from a negative 10% ROI to a 100% ROI. Now, at the end of the year, if you were to make 10% on top of your bankroll, you make $616 for that month, right? So it just goes to show that if you follow your process, your expectation would be to end up with around triple what your bankroll would have been at in January of the first year if you have a 7 to 10% ROI cumulative across all 12 months. But if you hit the nuts in at least one of those months, then your bankroll is looking like this to start the year. And then this is actually meaningful money. If you are able to hit 10% in January with this bankroll, then that's $616 that you made playing DFS. That can be substantial to some people. What if you hit the nuts twice, right? Like what if instead of this being a 20% month, this is now a 100% month? Like now at the beginning of next year, you're making $1,000 if you have a pretty decent month at a 10% ROI. And that is a substantial secondary income for a lot of people. That is what I would consider being a reasonable secondary income for anybody who's playing DFS. So this is the grind. This is what you should expect. Uh, and going back to that question before of, um, does playing lower stakes mean anything? It's a frame of reference, right? So it is, if you want to build your bankroll and you want to get to the point where you are able to make a substantial amount for a secondary income or for your main income, right? then yeah, it's absolutely worth it because you're gonna grind up and you're gonna increase your bankroll, you're gonna add your profits up to your bankroll every single month and that is going to cumulatively build, right? It's cumulative ROI. Uh, is it worth it to play those small field contests if you are planning to make you know, $1,000 a month? Absolutely not. You, you can't, like, yeah, there are gonna be months where you might get lucky that you're gonna make $1,000 if you have a $1,000 bankroll. You might get lucky on that. But it's very likely not going to happen, right? Like it's an externality. It's not something that you should expect to happen. So um, it, it, if it is something where your frame of reference is you just want to make $100 or $200 to go to Top Golf with your friends or, or have beer money or go out to dinner with your, with your significant other, whatever, yeah, then it's still worth it. But it all depends on your goals. And that's something that I always start whenever I talk to coaching clients, the, the, the first meeting and the first session is always, what are your goals for DFS? Let's put together some goals. Let's give you something to actually build towards. Because so long as your frame of reference is right, then you can actually understand why you should be playing the contests that you are playing mm -hmm. and where your bankroll is at and where you want your bankroll to be. So that's mostly what it comes down to here is your frame of reference, how much money you actually have in play and how much money you actually wanna make. If you feel like you wanna make $1,000 a month playing DFS, then you likely need a bankroll of somewhere around $10,000 per month. That's just the way that it goes. But you can get there if you are stringent and if you are um, very strict with your bankroll management and playing contests that you should be playing and grinding and grinding and grinding. That's what it's about. So if that's your goal, you can absolutely do it. I think that anybody can make substan can make a decent secondary living playing DFS if they really, really try and dedicate to themselves and, and listen to smart people. Uh, so yeah, that's that's kind of what this one has been about is, is building a bankroll and what it should look like, what you should expect, and why you should do it. Uh, again, my name is James McCool. I'm the owner of paydirtdfs.com. If you have not checked out the site, you should go check out the site. If you have not already subscribed to uh, this YouTube channel and liked this video, you should do those things too. Uh, all the things that help out content creators. If you enjoy my stuff, you should go help me out. So uh, thank you guys for tuning into this video. Uh, I will talk to you guys later. And hopefully if you're in the Discord, I can answer some more questions about this there as well. Anyway, have a good one. See you later, guys.